Tokyo Disney Sea. So we have made it to the park. We had a bit of a crazy day yesterday trying to get into Tokyo, but we've made it. We got up, had breakfast at our hotel, and we did start the day a little bit later than expected. We got here around 11. We basically just came in. We've had a look at the shop that sells the Pandora. I'll insert a screenshot of the shop here. And we were lucky enough to get the ones that we wanted. They weren't sold out or anything at 11 o'clock. We are now making our way towards Mermaid Lagoon. We're gonna spend a little bit of time there and then we have a lunch book. We secured the 20,000 leagues under the sea ride and we also got the premier access pass for the show at nighttime. So that's kind of our plan for the day. I will bring you guys along and yeah, I think it's gonna be really, really fun. Tokyo Disneyland is just so beautiful. It is so picturesque. As you guys can see from this footage, I was loving it. The Mediterranean Harbor area is so spot on. The only critique of this area would be that the ramps for wheelchairs, prams, walkers, those sorts of things, they zigzag. So you walk one end and then you'll have to walk all the way across to get to the other end and go up on the other side. Like, why not just put it all in a row so someone can get up there simply? We walked all the way from here to Mermaid Lagoon and that was the area I was most excited for. So stay tuned, we are almost there. one of the shops. The entrance is like the whale mouth from Pinocchio which is really cool and it connects through and you've got like two other shops. Behind me is one of the food court areas and behind me that way is more of the rides and stuff like that. So we've had a look at the shops, of course we bought some things and we have our lunch soon so we're kind of just wandering around. It's really awesome, I love it in here so far. I could spend the whole day in here, it's so pretty. Okay, update later. These were some really cute character interactions and they just happened so randomly. We had lunch at Horizon Bay restaurant and this was one that I pre-booked ahead of time. You can pre-book a space at the restaurants one month before the date that you're going. This is super handy for beating the lions and making sure you definitely have a place. At this restaurant, you could choose a plate. They had a few different options, but we went with the kids plate. We've now made it to Jasmine's area. I've got this Sully headband because it's keeping my ears warm. It is so cold. Mum is like rugged <laughs> up. She's got the hoodie on and everything. Oh my god, it's freezing. Okay. The next day. Hello guys, so it is day two in Tokyo today. As you can see, I am in the hotel. I did want to give an update though on like the room because I didn't really film a room tour or anything. It was because we got in so late and then once we got in, we realized that our beds are pretty much as hard as a rock. We could probably sleep on the floor and it would be about the same type of softness. When choosing which hotel to stay at, we actually picked this hotel because a lot of other hotels like the Disneyland Hotel and the Miracosta 
they were known for having quite hard beds whereas a lot of people online said that these beds were quite comfortable but that has definitely not been our experience. When we got in last night, we decided to sort of lay our dunas down as like extra padding, but unfortunately that wasn't quite enough. So we moved all of the bedding onto one bed and mum and I just shared and that still was not enough padding. So yesterday morning, we went to the reception to ask what they would be able to do. Someone please help and they decided to put another two mattress toppers on each of the beds. So at this point, we now have three mattress toppers and two dunas on each bed, and it's honestly still hard as a rock. It's super hard to sleep. My back is sore in the morning and my mum's back is even more sore. We went down to reception again today after breakfast and they said there's not really anything else they could do they could add more mattress toppers so we sort of said like is there anything else that can be done and they've decided to move our room so we're currently staying in room 855 and i'm not sure the number that we're moving to but we'll be moving rooms around 3 p.m today but our backup plan i guess is that if these beds are still terrible we might try and move to the sheraton hotel because again people online say those beds are comfortable but you know, if people think these ones are comfortable, I'm not really sure what to expect. But I didn't want to like be a downer or anything, but I do want to put this out there because if it even helps one other person decide if they should stay here or not, then I feel like that's helpful. I feel like if I'd have seen a video like this, I probably wouldn't have picked this hotel. I will turn you guys around and show you the beds now. That might help make a little bit more sense. So apologies for the beds being messy, but as you can see, our room has one bed here, a second bed here. If I show you this one, this is with all the mattress toppers. So here's one layer. That is the second mattress topper. That's the third mattress topper. And that is your mattress. The mattress is not even like the size of my like hand. It's probably the size of my palm. Oh my God. What is that? You can't really like, I guess you can see that it doesn't like squish. If I hit it, my hand just like bounces right off. That is the thickness. So, my eyes are correct. The tag is all in Japanese, but I'm telling you that that must say firm mattress. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This one is exactly the same. Like they are just super hard. You can see that is all mattress topper that is the mattress and yeah i definitely wouldn't recommend if you prefer like a medium or a plush bed the pillows as well are super thin so they're like feathering down ones and they squish down and they just squish right down to nothing when you're sleeping on them three hours later Hello vlog, so a little update on our bed slash hotel situation. We actually decided to take ourselves over to the Grand Sheraton and have a look at their hotel. The reception staff was super friendly. We basically explained the situation thanks to the help of Google Translate and we asked if they had like a room that was free so we could have a look at like what the beds felt like the receptionist was so nice and he did exactly that we got to go into a room sit on the bed and instantly it just felt better like there was a squish to them they were bouncy like there was a plush layer yeah! Yeah! exactly what you sort of expect a hotel bed to have. So we were really happy with that. We then had a look at booking.com and found availability for those nights. We also got like breakfast included. So we just booked it on booking.com and showed it to the guy. He like processed it on his end. He actually gave us like the room keys and everything early and then just said to check out of our other hotel and come back at like three o'clock because that's their official check-in. Um, and so we were able to just do that. Between these hotels, they also offer like luggage services. So we had our big suitcases transported from the Hilton to the Sheraton. Um, we're just waiting for them to arrive now. They should be up in our room by like 3.30. I also just want to point out that a lot of reviews said that this hotel was like 
dated or old or like kind of wear and tear but so far this hotel looks amazing like I did not know what all those reviews were about this room itself looks great and we had a look around at the shops and like the lobby area and it looks really good we also are gonna try the breakfast tomorrow as well so I'll give you my thoughts on all of that but for now I will show you the beds so as you can see this is the bed so they're much bigger these are like double beds before we had maybe like king singles they obviously come with more pillows as well which is awesome yeah look at that wow so here's the mattress i've just pulled everything up as you can see the mattress is literally the whole size of my hand the other mattress if you remember only was like the size of my palm this one is my entire hand then you have this plush layer here you've got a mattress protector as you should um, and then we've got a sheet uh, two sheets and a doona as well like the other beds were just not it compared to this this is so much better honestly what you expect when you stay at a hotel um, again we've got more pillows so you know if the pillows are not right, you're gonna be able to work something out with more pillows. That is a genuine comparison of the two beds at Hilton and Sheraton. guys so it's the next day today is our Disneyland day an update on the beds they are much much softer than the other ones but I would still say to Australian standards they're not like a plush I would say they're more of like a medium um, I did manage to get a much better sleep though which is always a good thing so yeah I guess that concludes the bed updates but yeah we're gonna head to Disneyland and I'll be back with more Disneyland updates soon we were feeling so much better this day after having a pretty decent sleep we are not rope droppers though so again I think we got here at maybe 9 30 10 o'clock and as you can see we just walk straight in there's no lines and a lot of the Premier Access passes and 40th anniversary passes were still available. We ended up using those passes for the Buzz Ride and the Beauty and the Beast Ride. We also had lunch booked at the Crystal Palace and we also had a dinner booking for the Diamond Variety Show Muster. So you'll see all of that soon. So we made it to Disneyland. You can see the castle behind me. Oh my God, they have like a marching band over there. And yeah, we had a look at some shops and now I think we'll take some photos of the castle. We have booked our premier access and a few rides and stuff. We have a plan for the day, so we're gonna wander around, do the plan, and yeah, I'll update when I can. We made it into Fantasyland. So we just went through the castle. Um, we had a look at the jewelry shop that's in the castle. That was really cool. I picked up a Mickey Mouse ring. I think the next plan is just to keep wandering around this section. Um, and then we have a lunch booked today. But yeah, Fantasyland is pretty cool. It is not as crazy and hectic here as it was when we went to Disneyland in America. That part of the castle was so congested and it was just like ridiculous trying to get through. Whereas here it's been like super calm. You can sort of go at your own pace. And yeah, that's my thoughts so far. While we were sitting there doing that update, we noticed that there was basically no line for the Cinderella ride. This one is actually more of a walkthrough. You go through Cinderella's palace and it is just decorated beautifully. There's little interactive dioramas and it is so sweet. 
You even see her thrown at the end. When we finished with this one, we had a wander through Fantasyland and the adjoining land, and we did stop in at Stitch's Tiki Room. Again, this one was perfect because it was inside. We got to get out of the wind for a little bit, and it was starting to get a bit gray. We then headed off to our lunch at Crystal Palace. We were very lucky to be inside and have a nice hot meal in a nice warm room. Again, I think I mentioned this a bit later, it is quite pricey, but I do think this was 100% worth it. It just gets you off your feet, you get to be comfortable for a little while, and there is so much food. You could also see the parade from inside as well. So if you were sitting outside, you would have had a fantastic view. They had so many desserts as well, and both of us were really keen to try the alien mochi. Like jelly lollies. Yeah. Mm. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah? So we're having lunch at the Crystal Palace. We've just finished, actually. We're about to head back outside. But this was so awesome. It was basically $90 per person, which you think might be pricey, but it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. So you can get as much lunch food as you like. There are so many options. And then you've also got all the desserts to choose from as well. They had the alien moochies. They had 40th anniversary desserts. There is so much to choose from. Yeah, it's stunning. As you can see, terrible angle of me, but the restaurant's amazing. You could also sit outside and I think you would be able to see the parade from there, which is really cool but it is so cold, so we sat inside. Um, that's it for this update, I'll check in later. We're now heading into Tomorrowland and we went here with the intention of doing Buzz's Astro Blasters. As I mentioned, we were able to book this with the 40th anniversary pass. The pass enabled you to get on this ride at a particular time slot, so that means that you don't have to wait in the line. You just rock up with your booking on the phone, they scan it and let you through. Even the pre-ride entertainment was really great on this ride. <laughs> After this, we went on the hunt for some Star Wars merch to bring home for Sam. I did originally think I found a Jar Jar Binks, but it was in fact Tony Solaroni. We also got to see the famous Baymax ride. Next on our list was dinner at the Diamond Horseshoe. So I booked this a month in advance so that we could see the Diamond Variety Muster. As you can see on our way there, it got really rainy. It was very wet and they do make you wait until the exact minute to let you inside. So it was quite cold, but it was lovely and toasty inside and we did get a lovely meal. The show is completely in Japanese, but it is so much fun and we had the best time.
若い王子様が住んでいました王子様は何でも思いのままにできましたからすっかりわがままになり優しさを失っていたんでしょうある夜お城に年取った物乞いの女が来て一夜の宿を恵んでほしいと言い一本のバラを差し出しましたDay, and we can see now Fuji today. Hello, guys. So, I'm back with another update. So, today is Thursday, and yesterday we went to Disneyland, as you would have seen in the clips. We had a really great time. It was a full on day. I feel like we got so much done. We ended up doing four rides. So, we did Cinderella's Castle, where you get to walk through and see the throne room, you see the glass slipper. The next ride we did was Stitch's Tiki Encounter.、Um, that was really cool. They sang a lot of songs from the movie. The next ride that we did was Was Buzz's Astro Blasters, and we used the free 40th anniversary pass for that. I think we got the 3 30 time slot, and we were able to book that at like 10 30. So that time was still available, that was super easy. And then we used our paid Disney Premier Access for the Beauty and the Beast ride, the Enchanted Tales of Beauty and the Beast. So that was the four rides that we did on this day, and they were all amazing. The Buzz Lightyear one was really fun. I don't think I would have paid for that if that was on the paid app, but the Beauty and the Beast ride was so well worth the money. It was honestly amazing. Again, we booked at like 10 30, but I think the first time slot was maybe 6 o'clock, but the time slot we booked was around 6 30. By that time, it was super cold in the park. It was freezing. I think it was about. Five or six, but with the wind, and it did rain that day as well, that made it a lot colder. It actually rained while we were in lunch, and then it rained while we were on the way to dinner. So we were pretty lucky and we didn't really get caught in it too badly. But something to consider if you are coming in March that yes, it'll be cold and the weather tells you how cold it will be, but definitely be prepared to minus a few de degrees as well because of wind and rain. It really does make a difference and it makes it that little bit colder. We also got really lucky and we saw that there was no lineup for one of the food stores. So we actually tried the Minnie Mouse macaroon, which I'll insert a picture of. And we also got the Minnie Mouse cookie. So that was pretty cool. We also got the Beauty and the Beast popcorn bucket. And again, that was just a random luck that there was only maybe five people in the line. Normally, these lines are insane. Like, they will wrap around the popcorn stalls as well. But this one was actually pretty short, so I managed to grab it. This is the popcorn bucket. As you can see, it's huge. And I still have popcorn in it from yesterday. I got the caramel flavor, and this one lights up as well. I don't know. I don't know how well you can see it because it is still daytime. But it's pretty cool. And I feel like an official Disneyland pro because I have a fancy popcorn bucket. You can also see my Duffy and friends up here on the bed. They are so cute. I put on Shelly Mae and Duffy's outfits today. I think on Friday when we go to Disney Sea again, I want to see if there is like some key chain versions, like the bag versions. Because I think I saw them, but I just wanted to make sure I got those ones on Monday. I think the plan for today is we're going to head to the Expiry Shopping Center. They have a Disney store there, so we're going to have a look at the merchandise there and probably grab something to eat there as well. I've got on my Baymax shirt and I also got a little Baymax bag, so I'm probably going to wear that today. And yeah, I will check in with you guys later. Straight after this update, we headed over to Expiry. I've put up the map with some basic instructions. It really is so simple to travel between all of the stops. The shopping center itself is really cool, it's like indoor and outdoor. There is so much here, we didn't even explore all of it, but the Disney store was definitely my favorite shop. The store does have a lot of the American Disney stuff, but it does have a Japanese flair to it. 
in the outside section of the mall you have got starbucks and you have got bon voyage which is another disney store this one sells park merchandise so it's got a lot of like the staple items that you see in every store in the disneyland and disney sea personally i didn't buy anything in here because it was all repeat merchandise but this is a great option if you forgot to pick something up at the park or if you're not going to the parks but you want to get the merch of course, we ended the day with some Old Faithful McDonald's and oh my god, it was so much cheaper here than at home. Ooh, who'd you get? This one. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so cute. So we are on the way to Disney Sea. It is our last day at Disney Sea. How are you feeling, Mum? Um, pretty tired. But, <laughs> yep. It's been a big week, but we're gonna have another awesome day at Disney Sea, and I'll catch up with you there. We just came out of Ariel's world so we decided to do that again just to see everything and do some of the rides which we didn't get to do when we were here on Monday. I think now we're gonna go have a look at the area where Duffy and that hang out because again we missed that on Monday and then I think once we've done that we've done basically like all of Disney Sea. So I think that's a pretty good effort. We've done really well. Update on the weather. Today is still cold, but not as cold as Monday and Wednesday. I'd say you still need a jacket and I do think it'll be really cold at night time, but during the day, it's a lot more comfortable today. Still windy, but not crazy windy. We also tried doing the mobile food order for the first time. We did that for Sebastian's restaurant and it worked super well. It was really easy to do. And honestly, the food was ready in like two minutes after selecting that I was there. So 100% recommend working that out. I'll update the vlog soon. So another update is now six o'clock. As you can see, the sun is starting to set. So we ended up getting to meet Shelly Mae, which was super cute. She was really nice and like, it was a really good character interaction. Felt like she took time with everybody, which was really sweet. 
and then we sort of walked around the American waterfront area we hadn't seen that before and we were super lucky that there was a really short line for the churros so we got to try the churros and we also had a coffee for any Aussies that are traveling the coffees are just black coffee and there's little pods to put your milk in so don't forget to ask for those you might also need like a whole handful to sort of make it like a latte I haven't found any lattes here we then just had another little shop I picked up a Pooh Bear and a Pooh Bear jumper which is so cute I've purchased so much this trip though it's insane we're now back in the entrance of Disney Sea. we're at like the fountain it's just up there and yeah we're thinking about what our next move will be and I'm a bit sad that it's our final day at Disney Sea. I honestly wish we could just hit restart and do the whole week again. I will talk to you guys later. anywhere in the park which was really good um yeah amazing 10 out of 10 bye tokyo disney sea